this is the swimming pool area. It's quite a long pool, uh, not very deep. Uh, it's probably about 25 metres long and uh, probably at the deepest it's only about 1.7 metres. The uh, three sections are roughly 6 metre circle, 10 metre curve and then a 7 metre circle at the far end and this is a ballast tank system where the water spills into that ballast tank underneath. The pump room is underneath the uh, little raised area there with the access gate down into the pump room. So for the solar heating system, we have the pump which just sits down on the second step of the swimming pool. It's a little 12 volt bilge pump capable of 3000 gallons per hour in optimum conditions a little on off switch which I don't really need it just sits in the uh, on position I had it turned off while I was doing some repairs to the system yesterday and then uh, the cable and the pump uh, the pipe go off towards the panel and on this side this is the outlet from the heating coil it just runs into the swimming pool which should come on yeah, in the next half hour or so. So the arrangement of the system is a standard 250 watt solar panel goes down into a car battery uh, ignore the smaller left battery that was uh, the original one uh, that lasted a couple of years cables off the solar panel, the black back cables, they come round through the breaker into the charge controller and back down to the battery and then the outputs from the controller so the charge controller come back through another breaker and feed supply to the temperature controller and through the bypass switch if needed. The water pipe comes from the swimming pool in through the shade so we can get the differential in the morning to automatically start the system round through the coil which is around 150 meters of 32 millimeter black water irrigation pipe and then back through the left hand pipe which is obviously sitting in the sun for the morning differential back through the bushes and to the swimming pool I originally had the uh, pipes running up and down this straight length uh, that you can see all the weeds have been uh, removed on however I found that uh, although it was an ideal position to run the pipes back and forth on due to the position of the bushes relative to where the sun rises the system wasn't coming on uh, until late in the morning, almost lunchtime. And by moving it just into that bit of spare ground where it is now, it comes on much earlier and is typically running by around about nine o'clock, half past nine uh, in the morning now. So here we are, it's uh, 25 past 8 in the morning and you can see that the sun is just starting to hit the coil, preheat the coil before pumping the water into the swimming pool. And over here is coral, we have the control panel and you can see the sensor at the rear on the right hand side currently in the shade, sheltered by the battery and the brick and that is the water pipe that comes from the swimming pool and here at the front you can see the sensor and the sun is just coming up far enough to start heat hit hitting the pipe and heating it and that is the pipe that goes into the swimming pool. Up in the control panel, you can see, or maybe you can't depending on how the refresh rate is working, 
but the temperature in the pipe coming from the swimming pool is 28.1 degrees and the temperature in the pipe going to the swimming pool is sitting at 28.5 degrees. As the sun comes up it starts to heat the pipe to the pool, the temperature increases in that one quicker than the one in the shadow and once the difference exceeds either two or three degrees, I can't remember what I said at, it switches on the output starting the pump and starts delivering the hot water from the coil into the swimming pool. Once the sun has come up high enough and heated the pool, uh, the pipe, the temperature difference in the water flow between the from the pool and the to the pool is sufficient to maintain constant on of the controller and it stays running for the remainder of the day until the sun sets in the evening when the difference in the pipe equalises and the differential goes back to zero. The regulator it is obviously charging the battery and the output to the, uh, the pump and the temperature controller is regulated by uh, the battery voltage. If the battery voltage drops during the day, the output is switched off around about 10.5 degrees uh, volts. And once the charge voltage increases again, the uh, output switches itself back on and allows the controller, the temperature controller, to uh, continue operation. During the day, with full sunshine, the uh, voltage remains pretty stable in the battery as the solar panel is capable of pushing out around about 9 amps and the pump in the swimming pool is taking only uh, around about 5.5 amps during full, full running. And on the right we've got some protection there, the system's rated uh, 10 amps and if for any reason a fault develops in the controller then uh, we've got 16 amp breakers there just to drop out and prevent the system melting as version 2 of the system did due to the solar controller failing. This little switch unit as you can see the left side of mark control and I can turn on and off the output from the temperature controller normally it just sits in the on position or auto and the temperature controller will just normally sit regulating the temperature control, the pump the output and on the right hand side is the bypass switch it's normally in the off position and if for any reason uh, I want to manually control the pump on and off. I can turn the control output off and put the bypass to on. So it's now 20 past 9 in the morning and the system has kicked on and off a couple of times as it just gets going in the morning. The uh, temperature coming from the swimming pool so the water temperature being pulled out of the pool is 30.7 degrees and the water temperature going to the pool is 36.5 so it's been running like that now for uh, a few minutes so it appears to be stable and now the system will just remain online so long as we've got sufficient differential between those two temperature sensors I find that during the day uh, April and May the temperature differential has been steady around about 5 or 6 degrees so now we're coming into summer the sun's getting higher we'll see how it uh, stabilizes later on in the day so these are the pumps I use on the system this was the one from last season unfortunately they don't last uh, too long this one actually filled with water and then uh, burnt out all the, or shorted out and corroded all the internals of the pump motor. 
Uh, it's rated 3,000 gallons an hour, uh, obviously at the lowest head uh, curve, part of the curve, uh, and 12 volts. It says 13 amp running, that's obviously at the highest static head. But where it's currently located in the system and the design of the pump arrangement, it runs 5.5 amps uh, during the day. And that seems to be the peak. Uh, a couple of the issues we get with the with the pump, um, as I said, the water gets into them. The other issue was I tried it on the upper step, so only the uh, top was uh, sticking out of the swimming pool. But I found that the top of the, the pump, uh, the, the, the first one I had, uh, it splits and allows water to get in there. And this one, I think just with the constant heating up and cooling down, it, it's efficient to let water seep in, seep in through the, the o-ring seal uh, in the gland there. The pumps are around 50 euros, uh, so it, uh, the benefit it gives versus the cost to change it out roughly every every season, it, uh, it's a small outlay. I will eventually, uh, hopefully find a better pump, uh, but I'll probably need to up the uh, solar panels to increase the load capacity and it's not worth it for the for all the cost of the pumps. So that's the pump units. Alright we have a 10 litre bucket and we're going to time how long it takes to fill approximately and from that we can obviously work out the uh, the flow rate from the pump and also the heat uh, energy input into the swimming pool. We can calculate that. Five liters, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that was thirty five seconds. That's good. So it's now 20 past 12 at lunchtime and the system has been on obviously since half past nine this morning and as we can see, maybe not on the screen, but the temperature at the outlet is 38 degrees C and we have a good healthy flow from the pump. <laughs> 